Jeff Cooper, who is a pharmacist in Australia, and, uh, because the uh, some situation here, so I can only introduce him as a Australia <coughs> pharmacist. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much for that invitation. Look, I was uh, very honoured and uh, delighted to receive this invitation to speak here today. Uh, it was something I wasn't really expecting to do when I had arranged to come up here and speak at a consumer pharmacist uh, meeting and forum to talk about the role of pharmacists and what the needs are of pharmacists. But since I am here, it's an ideal opportunity to share some of the things that I've experienced in Australia. You probably are aware of my affiliations and uh, I uh, am a media past president of the Pharmacy Society and many other organisations and many other uh, bodies back in Australia, government advisory committees. Uh, but a lot of that is in the past. I'm no longer on a lot of those advisory boards and the notice was short coming up here. So when I'm speaking today, I'm speaking as an individual, speaking as myself with insights into what I've seen of policy development in Australia and hopefully share some of those things with you and introduce uh, our speakers. But look, before I introduce those speakers, I've asked for, for all of you to indulge me just for one minute with a one slide that, um, that I have here. Uh, this is a slide that I used uh, while I was a national president of the Pharmaceutical Society. We have a various summits with all the pharmacy organisations and we do some crystal ball gazing about where we're going to go and what the role of pharmacists are. And this slide, when we do get it up, was uh, this is a slide here. Uh, it was, uh, I guess that's a, that was a slide you had up. Okay, we can, we can work from it from this. Look, it's a very complex slide. Uh, just run through all of those. I think get the whole slide up because it, it'll go through steps and I don't intend to go through all those steps. Just uh, forward through all of those so they, they all come up. But look, what this slide is, is really doing is uh, conceptualising to me what we need to do to improve patient outcomes. And it, that's what the good pharmacy practice is all about. Uh, so this is the end point of good pharmacy practice. I think there's more boxes to come up there if you just press them. Again, there's uh, more. Okay, that's, that's it, I think. Look, it, the, while it's a very complex slide, it's not all that complex, because what it is saying is the top area there is about the quality of pharmacy practice, and that's to do with standards about how our professional practice stands and about the standards that we use for operating our businesses and the environment that we work in. Uh, and what's below that line is the pharmacist's competence standards and how we achieve the competence in our, in our practitioners. And what we're really looking at, and what this basically says to us is that we can have a competent pharmacist, but unless we're working in a, in a quality uh, system, then the outcomes won't be optimal. And conversely, if we can really be working in very good systems, but if we don't have the competence, then the outcomes also will not be there. Now, there's various things that, that, that in all of those boxes, which I'm sure in our countries, or all of your countries, you could go back and populate each of those things. But that's how we populated those boxes. And the programs, you can see running down the left-hand side, the QCPP is a quality care pharmacy, which is an accreditation system for all of the pharmacies, community pharmacies in Australia. And then we have the professional practice standards and standards around S2 and S3. And that's uh, the scheduling of drugs. And what we're very concerned about in Australia is uh, a lot of those drugs are going as open sellers and we need to be handling those drugs properly. So we need those, those sorts of things. Uh, and then we have competency assessment and what that means. And we've actually developed now into our third set of competency standards, which is a very sophisticated uh, system of competency assessment and standards that we have in Australia now. And to the right of those things are all the activities that we're doing to, uh, to lead into pharmacist competence and the professional uh, development, the plan for pharmacists and, that, and what our CPE is. Uh, but up on the top right hand corner is probably something that very relevant to where we are today. And all of the things that we're going to do to contribute to patient outcomes really depends a lot on the standards of the overall healthcare system, especially medical practice 
And I think in the context of what we're talking about today, it depends on each of your countries and uh, the environment that you're working within because you're not working in isolation uh, as pharmacists. So you need to, to be uh, lobbying those sorts of areas. Look, I just thought I'd throw that in because it is a, um, a conceptual framework that uh, I've thought about for quite some time after using this five or six years ago. So we might just um, uh, move on from there. And uh, before I introduce uh, my colleague from Vietnam, I, I would just like to, um, to uh, convey to you that when I was a national president of the Pharmaceutical Society and we had FIP in Australia just a few years back, I took the opportunity to have a look at what our student base was and how multicultural Australia really is. And uh, what did surprise me when I had a look at our student base in Australia, that 49% of our students were actually born overseas. And 35% of those were actually born in Asia. And 21% of those were actually born in Vietnam. It'd probably be a little different now, but I think that we still have a very big Vietnamese influence within our, our student base and within our, and within our culture and our population. So we have a lot of ties with Vietnam. I'm very impressed with your country and the two occasions I've been there. And I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Uh, would you please welcome Miss Vietnam.